Sarah Coleridge um, wrote a very interesting little collection of verses based on the vocabulary contained in what was a very popular word list used in English schools called the London vocabulary, which is closely based on the word list that you'd find in Comenius' Orbis Sensualium Pictus, and more particularly in the Vestibulum. So it gives a very good basic grounding in vocabulary. And it's just one more way of learning vocabulary. It's a bit idiosyncratic, but I think it's rather pleasant. Let's have a look at it. Um, lessons in Latin. A father is pater. A mother is mater. A sister is soror. A brother is frater. A child should obey both his father and mother. And brothers and sisters should love one another. And that's the introduction to this little book. Um, it contains a very wide range of vocabulary. Um, for example, this one. A meadow is pratum, a flower is called flores. And muscus, my child, is the Latin for moss. And flumens, a river. And stagnum, a pool. Magisters, a master. And scholars, a school. A vineyard is vinia. Hortus, a garden. And venia means what in English is pardon. And pardon, my Herbert, must certainly ask. If ere his accused of neglecting his task. Bees. In Latin, apis means a bee, and honey is called mel, and faus is the honeycomb, and kella is the cell. In Latin, kera means the wax, and alviar, the hive, in which the bees their food prepare, in which they live and thrive, and flores are the fragrant flowers they skillfully select, and pollen is the yellow dust which they from them collect, and femur is the tiny thigh well fringed with useful hair, and tilia is the linden tree to which the bees repair, and Melios, the honey gnat, and Fucus is a drone, and Spiculum's the fearful sting which causes many a groan. Examen is the busy swarm, and Gluten is the glue with which they stop the crevices when they their work review. And Chrysalis, the curious case the cradle of the bee, and propolis, the sticky stuff, which on their doors you see. Um, there's lots of other stuff. Animals in Latin, fruits, um, the sea, flowers, different kinds of them, um, agriculture, and things about the land and the things that farmers use. If you're reading Virgil, the Bucolica, for example, the eclogues, all the stuff becomes in very, very useful. Um, pastorals, lots and lots of Latin poetry uses this vocabulary. Um, fire, let's have a look at this. And those of you who are familiar with Comenius, you can see how the selection of vocabulary compares. That ignis is fire and flamma, a flame, and formus the smoke which comes from the same, and ashes are kinis, I'd have you remember. And as to fawilla, it means a hot ember. A hearth is called focus, and scholars will mark that fulgor means brightness, scintilla a spark, 
black soot is fuligo and follis the bellows and heat is called calor my good little fellows and ardor means burning from which we receive our English word ardor I really believe the ship lots of vocabulary to do with ships fighting and swords and armor and things like that um, the vine and grapes and agriculture birds lots of different kinds of birds insects trees different names of trees more trees of course these trees come up frequently in Latin poetry so it's worth knowing them um, so that's that's it. it goes through family stuff different types of people in the family um, and bits and pieces to help you with your vocabulary so that's pretty lessons in verse by Sarah Coleridge and uh, I like it um, I find it quite fun to listen to every now and then even though I know all the words in it um, although to begin with quite frankly I didn't know all the names of all the different trees and indeed some of the trees I had to look up on Google um, to find out what they were because even in English I wasn't quite clear so there we have it um, Sarah Coleridge's um, Pretty Lessons in Verse for children available on Latinum in audio <laughs>